Welcome to the GCN Tech Clinic, where we aim to answer your bike and tech-related questions. As ever, you can submit your questions down below in the comments section using the hashtag AskGCNTech, and we'll do our best to answer as many of them as possible within the allotted time. Yeah. Right, let's get straight to it, shall we? First question this week is from Ruben Bryant. Hi, are there any brake levers out there, apart from Microshift, that are suitable for tiny hands with short fingers? Age six to eight in children's glove sizes and are compatible with older model Shimano group set. Are there any hack or bodges that would work? Struggling to get their reach in the combined brake and shift levers when they're on the hoods and they can't reach the levers at all when they're in the drops. They've already adjusted them as far as they go. Shimano say there aren't any official shims made for this and the reach to the handlebars is okay. Mm. Where should we go with this? Well, Shimano does actually make some smaller levers for smaller hands, uh, but not across all group sets. So they're called short reach levers. Yeah. And to the best of my knowledge, they're available in Tiagra and Ultegra Mechanical. Yeah, I think that's right. But like not in DI2 and not in every group set. <clears throat> Um, so that's an option. Um, the other option could be to just uh, fit some additional levers as well, like onto the tops. Oh, okay, yeah. To like go old like cyclocross type. Yeah, ones. yeah. So like cyclocross bikes of, of old used to have like lead, brake, additional brake levers fitted onto the tops, um, which you could then attach on. And those type levers that go on the tops are, are generally smaller and have a much smaller reach. So you might find those easier. To, to reach and grab from having your brakes there. I would consider um, a homemade little wedge to sit um, between the movable, movable bit of the lever and the body. You yeah. can even have something 3D printed quite easily and cheaply in plastic, because yeah. it's not going to be structurally strong. It's just got a force lever to remain out slightly. That's what I do. Yeah, yeah okay. A few options out there. Next um, question, hit it. Uh, it's from Ashley Lobb, who says, hey, lovely GCN folk. Should I just leave my Pirelli Chinterato Velos on during summer, or can I go shopping for summer tyres? And what's the summer tubeless tyre of the people? This is a question that I feel like Connor would ask oh, us. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I would, if, if you've got the money, yeah. I would absolutely 1 million percent swap out your Chinterato's come, come the nice weather. And if you're interested in performance, because yes. they will roll a bit faster. But I. I I'm always wary of saying interest in performance because a lot of people, it turns them off. Okay. I'm just interested in like, everyone likes, I think everyone likes going a little bit faster for the same effort. Yeah. And tyres makes such a big difference. Like, well, we always say best upgrade, best bang for your buck upgrade you can make. Makes more difference than like, you know, still buying fancy wheels and doing all these things. Like tyres is huge. And the difference yeah. between some, you know, fancy summer like Pirelli's, like the, um, just P0 racers, yeah. compared to running Chinterato's is massive. Yeah. Like, you will feel it. <clears throat> yeah, okay. Um, um, if you can, I'd recommend yeah. switching to a summer time. Absolutely do it. Um, you missed one question out, so I'll go back to Jan Nicholas. They say, hi GCN tech team. I've just removed the cassette from my rear wheel to give it a good clean and noticed that the free wheel, or free hub body, has lots of small dents in it they have sent us a picture, but I haven't looked at it yet because they already know yeah, what know it what looks it like. like. Yeah. Um, how does this happen? Is it normal wear? Can you continue to ride the bike? Do I need to change the Fiat body? No, it's really common to happen, and it's the, the where the cassette sits on the Fiat body. The Fiat tends to be made from a soft aluminium. The teeth just edge into it slightly. Yeah, it's something that's generally more prevalent on cheaper free hub bodies. Yeah. Like <clears throat> when you have more expensive free hub bodies on higher end wheels. Not always. Yeah. Uh, but you don't always get those teeth marks where it's like bitten into it. Yeah, it's just the force from that you're putting through the cassette yeah. being transferred through to the free hub. Some, like you mentioned, some premium brands or wheels will have a sort of steel insert there to protect it actually. Mm. But it, it works uh, fine. just fine, yeah, Keep, crack on. Don't stress. Richard Edwards is next, who says, I'll shortly be riding my first TT. That's Ooh. great. Yeah. I oh, love time trials. Time trial king over here. Um, 80 kilometers as part of a team triathlon. I recently picked up some, that's an unusual distance for a triathlon. It's yeah, not it standard. Is. No, I have no idea. One of the standard distances. Um, he said he recently picked up some clinchers at 404s with 13 millimeter internal width. That's very narrow. They're, By today's standards, yeah. Old school. Um, <clears throat> it's all on tarmac and the surface should be fairly good. 
Should I run 23, 25, 28 mil tyres on the front, same on the rear? I think for that wheel, based yeah. on it being old school and pretty narrow, I'd try and run 23s in there. Yeah, I think I have complete agreement. Modern internal rim widths, you're talking 19 to 21 millimetres. Yeah, because if you run 25s on a 13 mil rim, it's going to balloon out. And yeah. it's not really going to maintain the aero benefit of the wheel. No. Um, what I would yeah, definitely say do is get some latex inner tubes. That's going to really help you. Yeah. Um, um, I and, wouldn't and be too good, concerned. Good fast tyres and that'll, like we were saying with the, the previous question, tyres make so much difference. Just yeah. like get some good tyres. I wouldn't be too concerned on trying to use different sizes front and rear. You're going to be using a pretty narrow tyre. So, yeah. yeah, I think you'd be fine. 23s. Um, Richard Edwards says, oh, sorry, next question down. Eastern, uh, Eastern Brown, Brown says, do watts per kilo figures, which are often banded about, take into account the weight of the bike as well as the rider? Wouldn't it be fairer if bike weight limits were a proportion of the rider's weight rather than the same figure for everyone? As a diminutive rider, it will be more negatively affected than a big rider in terms of the effect on watts per kilo of the bike's weight. So That's when, interesting. Yeah, so when you hear watts per kilo banded around... The, it, it generally is just the rider weight. Yeah. And it's also generally like rider like naked weight. If that's the thing. Yeah, like not wearing all their bike kit. Yeah. So then what you then get is when people are saying, oh, they did this watts per kilo, it's taking that calculation is making an assumption about the weight of the helmet, the kit, and the bike. Interesting to say that, I had a brief conversation with Max Stedman, old teammate of mine the other day, and he was saying how some of the calculations which are used to give estimates of this stuff are really, really dated. And um, he was intrigued on trying to see if there's a method of proving how far wrong some of it was. Yeah, that would be interesting yeah. to find out. Maybe we'd bring him in for It'd a bit. It'd be good to, de yeah. to devise, like, to have like a set thing, because then, because there are ways of back calculating. Like, yeah, so he, he says the back calculating method is quite far out when you start to account for modern bikes, modern kit, modern tyres, wheels. So yeah, that's something to look at. Yeah. Well, not only not only that. It, yeah. Then you know you've got to factor in wind. Often you hear these things of going, oh, riders have gone up Mont Ventoux two in record time. They must be they must be cheating. Doing um, eight watts per kilo. Eight watts per kilo. It's not taken into account that they had a massive tailwind. Yeah. Um, um, so I would, yeah, I would like to see rider weight adjusted, no, rider bike weight adjusted to rider size in the future. I think that would be a good concept. I mean, this show we keep banging on about it, rolling resistance of tyres yeah. is so much lower now yeah. compared to what it was back in, say, the Lance Armstrong era when they were going up on tyres that were way slower. Yeah, crazy. Tubulars, narrow. Anyway, there you go. <laughs> Papa Godzilla uh, has the last question for this week's show. Yeah. Um, it has oh, nothing I, I to do with... I took it from another video, okay. so don't worry. He says, I don't think I've ever heard you guys talking about the, the Gates carbon drive. I know it's not the top choice for performance, but it's very intriguing tech, um, and I would like to know more about it. The maintenance side of it makes it very appealing. I wonder if they can eventually evolve into a game-changing tech. Well, I think the efficiency... Um, difference compared to the traditional drivetrain is the biggest thing here. I think if manufacturers can figure out a way to overcome that, then I think we'll start to see the technology incorporated into more performance situations. Yeah. Yeah. The the, the <clears throat> applications for like a non-performance bike, like an urban commuter bike yeah. or something that you're running around town on, or you know something you're using for work or, or whatever. Yeah. Like great. Oh, yeah, they are really cool. And we have done them before when we've done like fixed gear stuff as well. And yeah. Like Red Hook, we found a lot of Gates carbon bikes. And That's interesting. So I guess if you're using a belt drum and a geared system, it's tending to be like a sealed gearbox at the crank. Yeah, but for racing, yeah. or if you're doing like performance <clears throat> road riding in the mountains and things, or Grand Fondos, Sportives, whatever, yeah, I, I wouldn't recommend it for that. No, but I would like to see the tech evolve further. But at the moment, there's not a huge performance gain to be had. Right, we're out of here. More um, of your questions answered next week. Keep commenting in the comments section down below and we'll get some when we can. Oh, I'm going to go get a sandwich now. What are you going to have? to it all month. All month? Oh, yeah. you haven't eaten lunch for ages. Yeah. Chicken sandwich? Yeah. A chicken sandwich. See ya. <laughs>